But as he landed the car, he just he just starts he just started stabbing her. He just started stabbing her. And then they just ran. They took off. And my father got out the car and was chasing them. All I did was slam it in park to go chase these people. But then when I seen how my wife was screaming, I came back. That's Keith Smith and his daughter Valeria. <laughs> <laughs> describing the horrific murder of Keith's wife, Jacqueline, Valeria's stepmom. <laughs> I'm trying to be strong for my father, but I can't do it. I've never had anything like this happen to me before. I've never seen anyone die right in my face before. It was a murder that shocked the community. Jacqueline Smith, a wonderful, kind-hearted woman, trying to help a panhandler and her child in this East Baltimore neighborhood. There was a girl out with a, like a baby in her arms. It was like drizzling, it was cold. And my wife just felt moved to give her something. And Jacqueline went to hand the money out and the guy just leaned over, said, can I thank your wife? And said, you can thank my wife. And within that split second, this guy commenced to stab in my wife. What happened on that street corner seemed inexplicable. Why stab a woman who just handed you $10? Why kill someone who wanted to do nothing other than show kindness to a stranger? It just, it happened that fast. Like it, it definitely happened in a split second, you know? And it, it makes me look at this whole world differently now. You know, it makes me look at everything and everyone. Nothing is ever what it seems. Those words, prophetic. Because just three months later, nothing in this case was what it seemed. Right now, Smith's husband and stepdaughter are being held in Texas, both charged with first degree murder. They were saying that it was a brutal attack by a panhandler in East Baltimore that took her life. And now police say they made it all up. Keith and Valeria Smith were now under arrest, in custody, caught trying to flee to Mexico and then brought back to Baltimore. It was an unexpected twist that shocked most, but not those closest to Jacqueline, her brother and her mother. Not shocked, not surprised. I knew it from day one. You know why, you know, why would he stay in the area with her in the car after the man pulled the chain from her neck, as he claims? It was too corny, it, was, it wasn't real. Then another twist just before their first trial date. Valeria pleads guilty and admits her involvement. She's, you know, helped her father. She's indicated in the plea agreement that, you know, she helped her father dispose of the knife, helped her father dispose of, uh, you know, the other property, things of that nature. She's taken full responsibility for that. You know, she's still extremely upset about the entire thing. Um, and she, you know, certainly apologizes to the rest of the family for her role in this. But you can't tell us whether or not she's going to testify against her own father? No. And that is the big question. Many are wondering if Keith Smith's daughter will break from her father and testify. The way prosecutors say Keith turned on Jacqueline and ended her life with a knife. An ironic twist in a case filled with broken trust and broken promises. Unbelievable. I remember when all this happened and the news broke and it was, wow, what a, what a, Horrific, horrific sight. I mean, in Baltimore, they were going out and they were cracking down on panhandlers and trying to come up with new rules and new laws uh, because of what happened. But apparently it didn't happen. At least that's what Valeria is now saying. Let's bring in Ted Rollins. Ted, give me a little perspective on all this. Um, the, the first part of this story is, is that you have Keith Smith and his daughter Valeria being very out in front and, and telling you know, reporters like you and me, the story, you know, they're very bold and, and, and very descriptive and specific about what happened. And believable. Valeria, when she is talking about this, saying that she's never going to look at the world the same way and that things aren't what they seem, you're in grocer, you're thinking, wow. This is insane that this happened. And um, people, to your point, people in Baltimore were looking over their shoulder. Oh, homeless person, let's not give them money. In fact, let's go on the other side of the street because you never know what's going to happen. And it was all uh, complete nonsense. It's it's shocking that they, they were so bold that they, instead of saying no comment 
or we're grieving, we don't want to talk to them, you know, give us their space. They were out there in front of those microphones, and I tell you what, she sold it. And he did to some extent, too, but she is quite the actress. If she does testify against her dad, he's going to be in trouble. Is he? And that's the other part of this, right? Uh, and, and I'm wondering, because he's, he's going to trial. She has pleaded guilty. I presume there is some level of an agreement that she's going to testify, but they haven't come out and said that she will. But if she does testify, um, Ted, how can the jury believe anything that she says? We know that she's pretty good at lying on the spot. Right. Well, that's a great point. Will she do well uh, on the stand? I think so, because she has the acting chops. We've seen it in her uh, her her audition tapes, if you will. Um, but to your point, the jury will be informed of her situation and they may throw her out as being unbelievable. Um, regardless, if she testifies, uh, everyone will be locked in. It, it, it will be must see because uh, I have questions now. Did did Dad really do it by himself, or did she have more involvement? Yeah, and, but the problem is for Dad, his defense can't be that she's more involved than she said she is, because then he's implicating himself, right? So okay. I don't know where he goes from here. Is is he does he lock into the panhandler story, or or does he? Now point the finger not at the panhandler, but at his own daughter, who's pointing it back at him. Yeah, he's got to either say that he was protecting his daughter with the panhandler story, that she did it, uh, but I can't imagine a dad would do that to his daughter. Um, I'm surprised that he hasn't pled out. Maybe there's no offer on the table here, but you're you're exactly right. What's his story now? Does he stick with the panhandler and say that his daughter's making it? Why would she make it up? It's going to be fascinating to see what his defense is. Yeah, and the other—I mean—the other part of the boldness of the story, is, and it was—and it was brilliant to a certain extent until you know it kind of unraveled, you know, because because the focus was really on Jacqueline Smith being this amazing woman, which she was, and and painting her out to be this heroic figure, which she was in real life, uh, from everything that we've learned about her, she was a wonderful, wonderful person, but they. They create this wonderful gesture of, of a mother with a baby and she's got to roll down the window and has to give her money that so much of the attention of the public was on this wonderful woman who lost her life. And then, you know, the, the, the boogeyman, you know, the, the, the unknown panhandler that I think it was, I mean, I can't imagine this is the first time that perhaps they've been involved in, in trying to scheme or scam people or the public in some way or form. Yeah, the details of that story are so compelling that that she goes in to give the money to this mother holding a child, and then just at that moment, someone else comes around, and it was a whole trap. It was a trap. Um, you're listening to that, and you absolutely buy it because of the detail. What criminal is going to come up with that kind of detail? Usually you would see someone say, oh, it was a, a panhandler did it, and you'd you know, see right through it. It was only the people very close to her that saw right through this story, and obviously investigators. Yeah, and investigators who, who did a great job. And it took a while. I mean, it took months later before they were able to, to crack this case, and they got them just before they headed out to Jumped Mexico, to Mexico. Amazingly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ted, thanks so much. Cause, and, and folks, don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we're going to show you the whole interview with Valeria. It, it's, it's unreal. It, it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. And remember, she is now admitting that it was all a lie. Well, I'll show you the whole lie when we come back. Welcome back. The murder of Jacqueline Smith, as described by her stepdaughter. Remember, this entire thing you're going to watch, a complete admitted lie. It happened right up the street from my house. And um, the girl, she just came and she was like, um, she had a sign and she, asked, she was asking for help because she had a baby. And um, I was in the back seat, so I wasn't really paying anything any mind until I seen um, someone actually approach the car. And then that's when, you know, it just all just happened so fast. And now she's gone. So you were driving? 
my father was driving. My father, um, her husband was driving. We were at a stop sign. She's, um, I mean, he's, he's just a mess right now. So I've been with him. Like, this is the same outfit I had on. Like, I haven't been home because I live in Baltimore. But I just have to support my father because I don't know if he'll try to kill himself or anything. He loved her so much. Like, it's pictures all throughout the house of them. Like, I just don't want him to be alone and have something happen to him, you know. Where were you that night? Let's start from the beginning. You were okay. where? You were so, celebrating your birthday. Yes, the VFW is up in West Baltimore. It's like off of McMeekin and, and Druid. Okay. Um, it looks like a regular row house. Right, that most of them do. Yeah, yeah, but we had an awesome time. We danced and uh, we took pictures. We had a great time because I don't get to spend as much time with my family as I, as I like because I'm a, a musician. So, um, you know, I appreciate and I cherish any time that we get to, you know, get together. And they were dropping you off at they home? They were dropping me off back home. And, um, yeah, like, it just happened just like that. Just like that. And and now she's gone. And you were in the car? Yes. And I was in the back seat in the car when it happened. And, um, you know, as immediately after it happened, we, we went to the hospital and, and she was gone. They worked on her for like two hours and she was she was gone. And she wasn't even like, she wasn't even 50. I don't, but she was 50. 54. She was 54. Like, she was a young, she's the nicest woman that you could ever meet in your life. She was just a beautiful person. And she didn't deserve for this to happen to her. You know, it's been all over the news. It's just, it's f***ed up because, like. <laughs> I'm trying to be strong for my father. <laughs> I've never had anything like this happen to me before. I've never seen anyone die right in my face before. <laughs> I just want them to find, if anybody knows anybody, if anybody has, has any information, please help us and find out who did this to my stepmother, please. <laughs> Please, and just protect your family. Like, if you love your family, just let them know. Because life is too short. We were literally two blocks from my home. And, the, and, your, and your stepmom saw this woman and said, stop, I want to give her money? Yes. Then the man, uh, it was two of them. And the, a guy had came, because um, I'm in the back seat. So I just, anytime anyone approached the car, that's what I remember. And the guy was like, can I thank you? You know, can I thank you? Because she was going to give them, like, I think my father said she took out a 10 or something. Like, she was going to really help them out. And he's like, can I thank you? And as he landed the car, he just he just starts, he just starts stabbing her. He just starts stabbing her. And then they just ran. They took off. And my father got out the car and was chasing them. Like, he was trying to chase them. And that's the moment I saw my whole life flash before my eyes. Because I'm like, my body gets stabbed. Like, how could you just leave me like that? And I'm like, Dad, she's bleeding, you know, like, she's going to go, like, what's going on? And then he came back, and we went to the emergency Well, we didn't go to the emergency room. We almost drove through the Dagon Hospital. I don't know exactly where we were at, but the, the officer on the phone, he talked to us the whole way there. Like, he talked us through everything, and, um, like, we've just been getting so much help and support. She was trying to help. And as soon as she rolled down the window? Mm -hmm. No, not not immediately after she rolled down the window. It was it was. I, I mean, I couldn't even tell you. Like it just it happened that fast. Like it, it definitely happened in a split second, you know. And it it makes me look at this whole world differently now, you know. It makes me look at everything and everyone. Nothing is ever what it seems. And you just have to protect your family out here. You gotta protect them. Tell me about Jacqueline. What did she do? Jacqueline, she was a, 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 commuter, a, a c computer specialist. She was a digital um, a c c uh, communications. Person. Yeah, she was a communication specialist. And she was very smart. Here. No, yes, out here. She traveled all the time. She was very, very, she was a wonderful woman. Um, I was so happy when my father and her got together because um, they fit. And they, they were in love. They were soulmates. And she was just an awesome. She was an awesome woman. She was a powerful woman. Like, I looked up to her, you know, and... and, and you're still wearing the same clothes you did that night. Yeah. You've been, yeah, like, I... Just a Saturday I haven't, night, right? Yeah, I haven't been home. I haven't been able to... I'm just in shock. 
you know? And I just want to make sure that my father is okay. Because, you know, he's never been through this. Now he's a widower. He, has, he hasn't eaten. He, he doesn't sleep. And, you know, I'm just worried about him. I'm trying to be strong for him. And once again, folks, it's all a lie. She has admitted that. She has pleaded guilty. The question is, will she testify against her father, Keith Smith, at his murder trial?